Hey everybody, it's Christine of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share with you guys a special card that I made for my niece who got her first puppy that's all hers. She's an adult and this is her first kind of adult purchase and I'm so excited for her. She got an apricot poodle like my sweet biscuit was and I thought I'd make her a special card commemorating this incredibly exciting time for her. So I'm using this spiral uh, die set from Diamond Dies. It's called Stackable Spiral Pattern Decor Dies. And I'm just showing you guys how I'm putting together the card. I started off with a lavender or periwinkle kind of card base, put a white card front on top of it. Then I put a strip of this lavender kind of to connect the largest of these spiral circles. Um, and I'm putting two of them on because I am going to kind of have two focal points for the front of this card. And I've taken uh, kind of that periwinkle again for the next layer and then a deep purple for the top layer. And that's essentially my card front design. And I'm just making sure that the little spikes of the spirals um, gets positioned properly and I'm just gluing all of the layers down. It's actually quite dimensional. So that is the completed kind of card front design. And then the stamp set that I'm using is this retired Gina K design, Playful Pups. And I've just decided to color up two of these little puppies. One, which I think looks just like a miniature poodle and the other is so cute. It's got its belly up for a belly rub. And those are the colors that I'm going to use for the fur to kind of make it an apricot colored poodle. And I'm just showing you guys putting in the base layer where the highlights are. I'm putting in the lightest colors. Um, and I'm kind of just using a kind of spotted technique for coloring. And then I'm marking in where the darker shadowed areas are underneath the chin, behind the ears, under where the chest meets the legs, where the head would cast a shadow underneath, uh, where the ears and the haunches would cast a shadow underneath. And I'm pretending like the light is coming from above and kind of from the right. And I'm going to go back in and layer in the other colors, connecting the lightest to the darkest colors. And I'm not so concerned about having a smooth finish because poodles have curly, uh, kind of uh, very textured fur. So I'm just making sure that I color in most of the cardstock base with these three colors and I'm making sure that I re-accentuate all of the darker areas with that darkest uh, YR24. I'm using a YR21, 23, and 24. And if you're interested in any of the other colors that I use um, or any of the details for this coloring or for the assembly of this card, please check out my blog post, which is linked in the description box below. And you can see I'm just going back in, going back and forth between the lightest to the darkest uh, to make sure that I have a good sense of dimensionality with adding the darkest areas and the shadowed areas. I really get a nice uh, three-dimensional look. For the nose, I used a W7. And then for the puppy laying back on its side, asking for a belly rub, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going in, highlighting all the lightest areas. And again, I'm assuming that the lightest source is coming from the top and from the right. So all of the areas underneath the lower parts of the puppy, um, underneath the muzzle where the ear would cast a shadow, where the chin would cast a shadow, the lower part of the belly, the under parts of each paw, those are all getting the darker shades. Um, and again, I'm using this exact same colors because this is supposed to be two images of the same dog, even though the second dog is less curly. Um, I figured it lying down, you know, maybe it wouldn't look as curly as standing up, but I'm going back in and, uh, putting in those darker shades again on the lower parts of each segment of the body. 
And I'm not too worried about staying inside the lines because I know I'm going to be fussy cutting all of these uh, images out. And I'm making sure that the inset areas between the eyes, the lower part underneath the muzzle, all get shadowed areas. The tongue is being colored with an R22 and an R24. And again, the nose is with a W7. For the nose and the eyes, I decided to use a black glaze pen to add a little bit of shine and a tiny bit of dimensionality. I really love how glaze pens really make um, shiny areas, black areas really pop, makes it look alive. And I'm using a Memento Tuxedo Black ink marker to ink the edges after fussy cutting the dogs off camera. I'm using a Uniball Signo White gel pen to reestablish the highlights, the shine on the noses and the eyes of both of the puppies um, because the glaze pen has a tendency to bleed a little bit. I decided that the puppies would pop more if I added a white circle to the center of these spiral circles. And I wanted to uh, add a little dimensionality, so I'm using double-sided foam adhesive behind the puppies. I'm taking off the release paper there. And I decided I wanted a little bit of a ground for the puppy to lay on so it doesn't look like it's just floating. So I'm using a C1 Copic marker just to add a little bit of shadow there as if he's laying down on the ground. I'm going to do the same for the other puppy who's standing. I'm adding just a little bit of a, a hint of a ground there with a Copic C1. And I'm going to use more double-sided foam adhesive for that standing puppy. Um, I just wanted to get like a smooth finish to that ground there. I'm taking off the release paper of that double-sided foam adhesive behind that puppy and placing that in the second circle. For the sentiment, this also came from the same Gina K Designs Playful Pups stamp set. Um, I matted it off camera with the same colored cardstock. It says, here's to a day full of belly rubs and um, puppy treats. And I decided I would use a few enamel bone stickers that I had in my stash just to add a little extra interest and embellishment to that sentiment. Now for the inside card liner, I had more of that lavender cardstock. Um, and I decided to bring out an old Fisker's paw punch. I think this is retired, but it's called, I think, Furry Friends Paw. And it's a great Fisker's punch. I'm just going to add one of those uh, to the lower right hand corner of the card liner just to add a little interest on the inside of the card. And that's the completed inside liner for the card. If you've enjoyed this process video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out In Love Arts. You can take 20% off all your orders by using the coupon code G36967. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.